Demand for Web 3.0 developers is absolutely off the charts. There's a gold rush going on to build the next hot Web 3.0 blockchain, you know, metaverse project. And so many companies are flocking in this space to try to do this, and they all need Web 3.0 developers in order to realize, you know, these visions. So that presents a huge opportunity for people with the right technical skills in this space. But if you want to jump on this trend, then you need to actually understand like what's in demand so that you can learn that thing and give people what they're looking for. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the top blockchains that every Web 3.0 developer needs to know, what they do, and how you can learn them. I'm going to talk about this as a blockchain developer who works this technology on a daily basis, who has been in this space for years. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step-by-step -step start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's jump into this. Let's talk about the top blockchains that every Web 3.0 developer must know. So like I was saying before, I've been in this space for a very long time, and I've got a pretty good idea on what's in demand just from watching uh, everything, you know, unfold around me. I've got a pretty good idea of what the hot technologies are, you know, for the coming months and years. But I don't want you to just take my word for it, okay? We're actually going to look at some real data to back this up um, so that you can analyze this opportunity and break down, you know, what's in demand and what you should know. So I'm actually going to pull up the Electric Capital Developer Report for 2021. 2021 was a massive year for blockchain technology. The entire space moved forward. And they did a huge deep dive on the entire ecosystem and tried to find out like, hey, who's like getting the most professional developers every single month? Um, you know, what's what are the big open source projects that are uh, gaining traction? Okay, which blockchains are actually taking off in terms of developer adoption? So we're going to use these findings as a basis because they basically confirm what I was already was already seeing in this space. But like I said before, I don't want you to just take my word for it. Let's actually look at this data. All right, so which blockchain should you know about? So let's start off by looking at this data and how they categorize things. So they really start off with you know three major categories as I see it. So essentially Bitcoin, you know, it's the, the grandfather of all blockchains, all right? Then you got Ethereum, which is just right after that. And then you've got basically everything else, all right? We're just gonna kind of lump that into a basket. You can see that this line here, we talk about how well developers are, which ecosystems are growing. So they show you how the Bitcoin ecosystem is growing, what how Ethereum ecosystem is growing, and they just kind of lump everything else in the same basket with two different lines, you know, top 200, outside of top 200 in terms of cryptocurrencies by market cap. So um, let's just start with this. So, you know, Bitcoin, of course, um, is, is a blockchain that's been around for forever. Um, as a developer, though, there's not a whole lot you're probably going to do with Bitcoin. You need to know about it. But in terms of programming competency, unless your job like really requires you to code for Bitcoin, uh, like or you have an idea of a project you really want to build about Bitcoin, there's not a lot you're really going to do with it. OK, you're not going to write a bunch of programs and put on the Bitcoin blockchain. There's other like, you know, kind of layer two like solutions. But that, that's one of the reasons that like you can see Bitcoin development's kind of the lowest, you know, uh, line here, even though it's very popular cryptocurrency and blockchain. But you can see Ethereum has a ton of market share here in terms of growth and where the actual developers are. OK, and that's why it stands alone as a category in and of itself. Right. It's definitely um, the largest ecosystem developers by a long shot. OK, it's been around for uh, quite some time now, especially compared to other smart contract platforms. There's a lot of them really just getting popular in the last year year or so okay so ethereum is definitely the most popular uh uh you know blockchain we'll talk about how to learn all this stuff in a minute but you definitely need to understand that it's definitely a huge category leader uh as per the data so then we can see everything else uh gets bigger right but these are just everything else kind of lumped into their own baskets so let's talk about the the other the blockchains and the everything else camp so the other blockchains i want to focus on in this video from this report um, are the ones that are growing uh, in terms of actual developer adoption, things that are do happening right now, the fastest, okay? That's that's the metric that we're going to go for. We got Bitcoin, which is said, it's the most popular blockchain in terms of cryptocurrency, but not necessarily for developers. Ethereum is definitely the most popular uh, market cap leader with a ton of developers. Then we got everything else. So uh, what's in the everything else category that's actually getting quick adoption? So really quick, we got Phantom, Solana, Internet Computer, Near, Terra, Harmony, Algorand, Avalanche, Flow, Chainlink, Polygon. Chainlink's not a blockchain. It's just an ecosystem. All right, full full time monthly developers: Terra, Solana, Near, Phantom, Flow, Avalanche, Polygon, Kusama, uh, Internet Computer, Moon River, Algorand. Okay, these are blockchains you definitely want to pay attention to by these metrics right here. And let's talk about you know what's involved with each you know blockchain. What should you learn if you want to get on this? And I'm going to give you my opinion. I'm you know if you're just starting over from scratch, 
and you don't know what to do, you know, what track should you take? All right, so I'm gonna pull this to my whiteboard here and show a pretty important distinction between some of these different blockchains. Let's just start off with the Ethereum camp itself. That's the most popular developer block, you know, ecosystem by a long shot. Now we've seen lots of other blockchains pop up that kind of uh, take Ethereum's model and try to change certain aspects about it. Maybe it's something with the consensus mechanism. Maybe it's like they do delegated proof of stake instead of proof of stake, or maybe they come up with some, you know, uh, a self-proclaimed genius idea to surpass Ethereum, whatever it is, right? But the whole idea is they want to, you know, take, they, they want to make it easier for developers to get started in their ecosystem. So what they do is they take the programming language for Ethereum and they make it work inside their ecosystem. So that it's really easy to get started. You can take a lot of your same tools. If you already know how to develop for Ethereum, you could take, you know, competent ETH developers and move them over to this other thing, you know, some upside potential in that particular space. So um, that's what we call EVM compatible. Basically, they, uh, if you can write, programs for ethereum most popular ecosystem you can make your programs work in their ecosystem typically with minimal code changes if any all right so um i'm gonna see this on my on my screen here on my board so if you're writing for ethereum you need to understand the solidity programming language for writing smart contracts okay that's what you need to do to, uh, to, to create that that's the exact skills i teach you on this channel all right and then you can go apply that to lots of other evm compatible chains like phantom um, you can do it for Avalanche, you can do it for Polygon, oh, there's lots of other EVM compatible chains, lots of chains on this list. If you could write for Solidity, you could write for Ethereum, and then you could write for these as well. You can see an entire list of EVM compatible chains like this here. This is outside the Electric Capital Report, but I would definitely add this to your list of chains that you, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna get this all for free if you, if you learn Solidity, you know, Mainnet, um, you know, all, <laughs> I'm not even gonna read through this list, it's absolutely insane, you could just pause the video uh, look at this here. Okay, so but then there's this other category. I show this on my whiteboard here of non EVM chains, which basically means you're going to have to learn new programming from scratch, uh, typically uh, to do that. Okay, so what are you going to have to learn? Uh, so let's talk about like Solana is is one of the fastest growing uh, ecosystems in terms of full time developers. Okay. So for, Lana, so for Solana, you're going to have to learn Rust, all right? So uh, Rust is a much more low-level programming language. In many cases, it's kind of harder for beginners to learn, but that's what they use to write their smart contracts and their, their model for how they manage accounts. And lots of other things is fundamentally different from how EVM-compatible chains work. They have a very different philosophy on many, many other things. And so you're going to have to you know, experience a full paradigm shift in order to you know, adapt to the Solana ecosystem if you're coming from another blockchain uh, background. If you're a brand new programmer, uh, then that, or, or maybe you're a programmer and you just you haven't been in blockchain yet, it won't be that big of a switch because everything in blockchain is a big switch. Um, you know, Terra has its own unique programming language. Flow has its own unique programming language. All right. And so, uh, you know, we have blockchains like Algorand, which um, basically support uh, other, other traditional programming languages like Java, for example. You write Java, you can write, uh, you know, code for Algorand. All right, so now this is a pretty daunting list because there's already too much to know in the tech space. There's already too much in the blockchain space. Nobody can become one expert in everything. All right, it's like you see, easily ten different blockchains to choose from here. How do you know which one to pick? Because you're not going to be able to do everything. All right, so um, that's the first step is just knowing that you don't have to know everything. You just need to pick something. So, but even then, like if you just pick one thing, like how do you know which direction to go? So I'm going to give you uh, kind of an opinionated st uh, standpoint on this. This is my opinion, but it comes from watching this space develop quite a bit over time, helping lots of other people learn to become real world blockchain developers from scratch. Okay. Um, so my opinion is that you should go down uh, the solidity track, the EVM track, because you can work, uh, you can start writing applications for the most in-demand blockchain ecosystem as it exists today uh, with Ethereum, okay? And then you can take that knowledge and apply it to so many other blockchains like, you know, Binance Smart Chain, uh, uh, Avalanche, like we saw earlier, Polygon, anything that supports solidity out of the box, you're going to be able to take that knowledge and, and use it for that blockchain. So you get a lot of bonus environments for free. All right, the other big benefit that you get from this is you're going to be in very active developer ecosystems where there's going to be resources for you to get uh, information if you don't know how to do something and also get help if you're unstuck, okay? And the, also the other big benefit here is that um, because it's been around so long and it's continuing to gain adoption, it's way more likely that it's going to stick around and continue to grow. It's not a guarantee, but it's way more likely compared to something that's brand new. 
because we saw this entire other list over here of non-EVM compatible chains um, that are just brand new, have just gained popularity in the last year. And there's no, we don't know exactly what's going to work. I don't, we're not, I don't think we're going to live in a future where we have a thousand blockchains that all have, you know, a ton of, you know, demand. And you're probably going to see consolidation around a handful of them. And, you know, Ethereum's got a really good shot at being a leader in that space, if not the leader, okay? And all these other ones, you don't know necessarily which one's going to, you know, take off, okay? Um, so, you know, if you want to learn a different one, then, you know, you can make that choice. I guess what I'm saying is how you invest your time is almost more important than how you invest your money because you can always make more money later, but you can never get your time back, okay? Um, so, you know, trying to figure out where you want to plant that tree in terms of your expertise is, is a really important thing. And I'm trying to give you some ideas on how to save you potential uh, downside risk in the future. And the other aspect is many of these other programming languages uh, like, you know, Rust uh, for Solana, that's a much more low level programming language. Um, it tends to be more challenging for beginners to learn. Solidity is usually a much more beginner friendly programming language. It looks a lot like JavaScript and other beginner friendly languages as well. And beginners have a typically easier time learning this stuff uh, than many of the other things that I've seen. But that's just from my experience. You don't necessarily see that reflected in the developer report. All right, so those are some of the top uh, blockchains that you should know about if you're uh, trying to become a web 3.0 developer, you know, an in-demand web 3.0 developer. Um, you don't have to have technical competency in all these, like I was saying before. You really want to have them on your radar, know what they are, but then you want to pick, you know, a handful of things or maybe even just one thing uh, where you can really get some expertise and drill down and become effective for somebody else because that's how you're going to be uh, add value and that's how you're going to become highly paid to create your own project, whatever it is. You got to get good enough at one thing to add that value. So as always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really slips videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast in this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those, you can want to take the next step. Or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely. I can show you become a blockchain master step by step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I felt people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.